This is an old-fashioned trade stimulator from the 1890s. Apparently it was used to help sell tobacco. It has five windows behind glass where you can see dice roll markings. Each one has its own bar down here and there's a long bar going all the way through the thing. It says, what shall I smokes? And patented September 2, 1890. And that's all you get. Push the big lever and watch them go. With so little to go on, it's hard to know exactly how this thing was used. I got this from my old friend Irene. Thanks, Irene. It's been kicking around in her family for a while, but they don't really know what it is either. After some digging, it seems to be an example of a weird old thing called a trade stimulator, the direct precursor to the slot machine. You know, gambling has existed throughout all of human history, and the first self-contained gambling machines appeared in the 1890s in America. Slot machines were developed almost simultaneously in New York and San Francisco, and they had the whole package. The machine takes your money, it does something apparently random to see if you win, and then gives you your winnings. This thing here, it doesn't do money at all. You don't put any in or get any out. It just does the dice roll. What's the point of that? Well, gambling in America has always been legally complicated. In the 1800s, betting on horse racing was common, and there were government-run lotteries, but private betting on games of chance was generally illegal. So a real slot machine like this, the complete package, probably would have got you in trouble. But this thing, it doesn't take your money or give you money. It probably would have been at the counter in a bar or a tobacco shop, and depending on who's in charge, it could have been used in different ways across the whole spectrum of legality. Of course, you could use it just like a slot machine. You pay the guy in charge to take a spin and then the guy just watches what happens and you win or you lose. That would almost certainly be illegal, but that's not how they use these things back then. These things were all about legal ambiguity. Like here's a classic trade stimulator scenario. Let's say I'm selling cigars and I want to maybe entice people to buy more. Maybe a cigar costs five cents, but here I'll sweeten the deal. Every time you buy a cigar, I'll let you spin the wheels. And if you get three of a kind or whatever, you win a free cigar. The idea for me is that, yeah, I'm going to have to give away a free cigar every so often, but hopefully this whole arrangement is so exciting that people are going to want to buy more. So I'll end up ahead. And does that count as gambling? I don't know. To me, it doesn't really sound like gambling. You're just giving an extra little incentive to buy a cigar, stimulating the trade, as it were. Like here's an old gumball machine with a built-in slot machine, but that's not gambling, right? Because everybody gets a gumball. The other part, come on, that's just for fun. And actually on this machine, it really is just for fun. The slots part doesn't give you anything if you win. It just tells you your fortune. Come on now. But with a more ambiguous machine, who's to say? We could easily arrange the deal with the prizes in all kinds of ways. Like what if I made the game part really hard to win, but you're going to win a thousand cigars. And hey, maybe you do win a thousand cigars, but come on, man, let's be honest here. Nobody really wants a thousand cigars. And hey, I don't even have a thousand cigars behind the counter here. Let me just give you the cash value. And when you do it like that, the trade simulator turns into a pure gambling machine. The cigars or the gumballs or whatever else, that's just there for show. There is a token amount of goods exchanged for money, but that's just legal cover. This is straight up gambling. Unlike a real slot machine, this thing here is ambiguous enough that you can't really prove who was doing what with it. The cops aren't going to bust you for having this thing because the machine itself doesn't really do much. It just randomizes the numbers here. And whoever made this thing, they ain't telling. There's no maker's marks anywhere. It says, what shall I smokes on it? I guess that's a question mark, but I like it better as a S. It looks like there might have been a paper label stuck to the bottom at some point. Hard to say. And it's got a patent date, but it says applied for and no patent number. Well, I looked it up. There were 552 U.S. patents granted on that date, and I read them all. We got device for delivering mail bags to cars in motion, device for indicating the ages of persons, the trigonometer, that looks pretty cool, a means for charging and using secondary batteries by some guy T.A. Edison. I don't know. But eventually I came to this one, Game Apparatus by a certain Reinhold de Green of Washington, D.C. The drawings aren't exactly the same as my model, but this is definitely it. The patent doesn't explain exactly how you're supposed to use this thing, just how it works. He calls it an improved raffle box. 
I'm not sure what other similar mechanisms existed back then, but a machine to give random numbers is kind of an interesting idea because randomization is something that machines are famously kind of bad at. A machine is meant to do the same thing every time. Even modern computers don't typically give you real randomness. But the randomization in here really comes from how hard you press the bar. That starts the wheels spinning and it's pretty chaotic in there. Even a small difference in the starting speed will lead to totally different outcomes. It's just got screws on the front here and as you're unscrewing it you can feel kind of a spring pushing up against the top panel it feels like one of those snakes in a can it's actually this thing here the long bar has these teeth on it that hit these soft round bumpers on each wheel it doesn't do much when the front is off but when that spring is pushing it down it'll spin them right round the guts here looks just like in the patent drawing and all of this stuff is made to be removable and replaceable everything just slides in and out no tools needed except for the screws on the front. The real action is in these drums with the numbers and unfortunately they're glued shut and I don't want to break one open. But you can see pretty clearly on the patent drawings the inside of the drum has six little punch outs in there and there's a heavy ball inside that rattles around and eventually it settles down into one of these six positions. This thing isn't working all that well unfortunately. On a typical spin most of the wheels don't fully engage. I think the problem is with these bumpers here which engage the spinny bar. The patent calls these rubber rings or other suitable cushions and I think they just dried out or compressed too much over the years. Probably easy to fix but this is a real antique so I don't want to modify it. But anyway it's still hard to say how this was used. You can call it a raffle box and it sounds pretty innocuous. It just gives you some random numbers. But these five other pegs down here give it a bit more sophistication. These actually aren't in the patent, but they make the thing much more interesting as a game. When you pull one of these guys out, it disengages that wheel so it won't spin anymore. So the game probably involves spinning the wheels with a certain goal in mind, like get all the numbers to match or something. But then you get a few tries and you can freeze individual digits while you re-roll the others. Americans will recognize this as Yahtzee, which was published in the 1950s, but that was based on similar dice games which had existed around the world for a long time. I actually had a travel Yahtzee set when I was a kid that was basically the same thing. Five dice that are totally enclosed with little bumpers that let you roll some but not all of them. The extra locking bars really changed the whole thing. It's tempting to think this wasn't a gambling box at all, just like a Yahtzee type game. But I think the what shall I smokes puts it squarely in the trade stimulator tradition. Is it just some kind of cute toy that they use to help sell cigarettes? Or is it a front for a high stakes numbers game? Probably somewhere in between, but I guess we'll never know. The mathematician in me wants to know if this thing is really statistically fair. This is always a question I have about slot machines. Like, how do I know they're not playing some funny business inside the box there? You know, rigging the machine against me. This thing, you could easily redo the labels so that some numbers never come up at all. Or if you were fancy about it, you could fill in some of the little punches inside the drums to fine tune the probabilities of each digit. Sealed up inside the drum there, it'd be completely undetectable. And don't get me started on modern digital slot machines. The code running those things could say whatever they wanted to say. Make me lose every time. Of course, even a so-called fair slot machine is already meant to make me lose. So there's something charming about this one, which at least in principle is easy to take apart and inspect. It's a weird little contraption just to play a dice game. I mean, if a bartender or whoever wants to do this, why not just keep some dice on the counter? Well, because that's obviously gambling. This, yeah, it is the same thing, but you push the button, watch the things. It's fun. You like fun things, right? Come on, we're just having fun here. Now give me your money.